Hey guys, Barb here, and in tonight's video I'm going to talk about the Universal Law of Vibration. It's the most important law of all Universal Laws, so stay tuned to the end of the video so you can find out what it's all about. Now, if you don't mind, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell button so you get notified every time I lay down another video so you can get caught up on what all the Universal Laws are. And I, if you don't mind, I'm going to be reading some of my notes here. So, all right. The Universal Law of Vibration. The reason that this is the most important law is because this is about the biggest factor in manifestation, is the magnetic vibration that is all around us. And it's um, it exists in everything and it's everywhere we breathe it in it's all around us although it's invisible we can't see it we can if we're tuned in we can feel it like you know when you walk into a room that you've never been in before and you just feel something in that room like I to give you an example the first time I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The first time I walked into the uh, Egyptian wing, you know, it's like after you get through all of the Egyptian treasures and the mummies and everything and you go back to where they've got that um, replica of, a, of an Egyptian, um, I can't think of the word of it now, or now, of a, it's, it's like a, it's a little Egyptian church there and and so it looks you feel like you're walking into Egypt and the first time that I walked into that room I, I got such a incredible feeling from it and I think it's actually actual bricks that they moved from Egypt and they rebuilt this little um, building there in the, the Metropolitan Museum it's really amazing and it felt really amazing to be around. I got the same feeling when I was living in London and I went to the British Museum and I was walking through the Egyptian wings and you know where they've got all of their Egyptian treasures that they stole from Egypt and uh, also the Greek and Roman wings that they've got there and um, it, it's just like when you're around those huge structures they really resonate with a lot of vibration it makes me um, wonder what it would like to be there in person to see the pyramids uh, I have another example for you as when I was in England I went to see Stonehenge and the vibrational forces at Stonehenge are freaking amazing they're just like you can't help but feel them. So anyways, this is what is referred to uh, as the prana in the Hindu um, verses. And it's chi, you know, from the, the, the Chinese. And also, if you're a Nikola Tesla follower, like many of us are, it's when he refers to the ether. He's referring to these things like the prana, the chi, the life force, um, the field, or the matrix. These are all re references to the same force that's all around us. And it's, it's a magnetic vibration. And we we all create different uh, vibrations like our our thoughts create certain vibrational waves and all those vibrational waves that our thoughts create attract things with similar vibrational waves to them so your thoughts are out here you know waving around with a certain vibrational wave and they're calling to them things from out in the prana or the chi or the matrix they're calling those things to 
match up with their vibrational waves. That's why it's so important to make sure that we're tuned in to the right vibrational frequency. And it's, that's a lot of work to be tuned in to the right vibrational frequency. If you uh, follow me, you watch more of my videos, I will be talking about different things that we can do as individuals to help keep ourselves tuned into that vibrational frequency because it takes a lot of work and you have to be very mindful of it and to be mindful in every moment it it takes a lot of work and I if you follow me I will be presenting different things that you can do on a daily basis to keep yourself mindful and in the proper vibrational frequency um, Just trying to make sure that I'm hitting all the points that I want to hit here and it's also what it is is it's the from when Nikola Tesla talks about if you knew the meaning of three six nine you'd know the secrets of the universe well what he's talking about is nine is nine represents the ether and the three and the six represent the vibrational waves that bounce back and forth through the ether. So that's what he was referring to when he said that if you knew this, you would know the secrets of the universe. Because if you understand what the ether is and how the vibrational frequencies move through the ether, then you can understand how you can attract what you want into your life. And it's also how you can heal yourself because all of the organs of our body are also vibrating on a certain frequencies and this is how people heal themselves it's how people heal themselves through prayer because prayer is a focused intent on a certain outcome so when you get a lot of people praying for the same outcome you get results Excuse me, my, I'm going to tickle in my throat. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. It's like um, when a number of years ago I was in a coma and uh, they didn't really have any hope for me to wake up. But I know in particular my mother, who lived in California at the time, she was a very religious woman and she got my name on many prayer lists and she, you know, she just really had a lot of people praying for me. And I think that that had a lot to do with the fact that after 23 days, I actually woke up and I wasn't a vegetable. And uh, it, I think that's also a reason why, one of the reasons or a contributing factor to the fact that I learned to walk again. Um, so... It was getting all of these people to focus on a specific intent. And when you can do something like that, that's why these prayer groups, I believe, are really helpful. Um, and I believe that prayer actually helps because prayer is like a meditation. You're, you know, you're just focusing your intent on, on a specific point or outcome. And... Well, you know, during during the process of prayer, you're really um, f focusing the vibration to that. And the more people that you have doing it, the, the better the outcome, I think, will be. So that's just an example of how it can work. Um, and another thing is, uh, I have to refer back to when I was in the hospital because you know, after I did wake up from the coma, the doctors told me I would never walk again. And I just, you know, I never listened to them. I did not, you know, key into the fact that they were saying that to me. There was just something inside of me that just knew to block that. I just didn't listen. I, I never once thought of myself as not walking again. I knew that I would walk again. I was very certain about it. I was very intent on it. I believed it. I, be I knew 
I knew I was going to walk again. So I didn't like let their vibrations penetrate me, you know, and it's like, if, if I could bottle that and hand it out to everybody, I totally would. But that's kind of like the, the state that we need to be in for ourselves is in a state where we can have a shield against the negative vibrations that, that come towards us or that people will shoot at us, you know, intentionally and unintentionally during the day. Um, you know, we will pick up on these things throughout our days. And also, you know, like people will leave a room and they'll leave their the thought vibrations behind. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, like you've walked into a room somewhere and all of a sudden, You've gone from a good mood to a bad mood and you don't know why. That's because you've, you're picking up on somebody's leftover vibes that you don't want, that are unintentional. So it's really tricky to build up a shield against that. I know that myself, I haven't really been able to build a, a proper shield against um, outside forces coming in. You know, um, certain things will just change my mood drastically. Like um, last night I was, uh, I was taking part in a webinar and I asked a question in the webinar and the response that I got back was not what I wanted to hear. It wasn't what I was hoping on. It was like a really kind of negative response to the question that I posed. And I had a knee-jerk reaction to that and it brought me into a like a really negative space and it's like and I and, and I I knew what had happened and I was like god you know how do I you know how do I protect myself from this this type of thing happening the the answer is you have to be mindful of every moment that you're in and that is a practice that takes a long time to develop. I mean, when you think about the the yogis in India, they spend, you know, years and years meditating to get to that place of uh, euphoria or their, you know, where they're with their higher self all the time. They don't really do much else except for meditate to be in that higher space. And I don't think that, that many of us are willing to sacrifice or give up that much of our lives to to be the embodiment of our higher selves so it's when you think of it like that it's not something that you should beat yourself up for um constantly falling into a negative vibe you just need to realize what's happening and just do your best to um, pull yourself out of it. And the way that you can do that is just by um, repeating certain things over and over again. And like I said, if you follow my channel, I will do some uh, future videos about, you know, the things that you can do to help keep you in that, that, that good vibration place. So this is why the universal law of vibration is so important because it's it's way bigger than the law of attraction because the universal law it, it drives everything vibration drives everything in our lives whether we know it or not you know and most of us walk around you know in a in a lower you know, negative state and we don't understand why these things are happening to us. And then when we start realizing, oh, it's because of, you know, I'm putting out these bad vibrations and they're attracting these bad things to me. And then you start beating yourself up for not being able to get out of the bad vibe spot. And I think that it's one thing <clears throat> that either, one practice that you can, you can do to raise your vibration is the practice of <clears throat> gratitude and forgiveness and 
the first person that you need to forgive is yourself. So, you know, just stop beating yourself up and, you know, just realize what's going on and just say, it's okay, this is what's happening and this, I just need to shift my, my vibrational frequency. I need to, you know, ways that you can do that is like, listen to music that helps you get into that state or um, if you've got a, a good friend that you can call up that'll make you laugh and, and that brings you into a higher vibrational frequency, you can do that. Um, basically anything, any object, any place you can go, um, any yeah, any object or thing or place that puts you in a better space, you should do that. <clears throat> when I lived in San Diego, I used to go to the beach all the time. I'd go to the La Jolla Shores and just sit there and watch the water splash on the cliffs for, you know, a couple of hours. I would sit there and just like do that. And I think <clears throat> that was a form of meditation that I didn't realize I was doing at the time. But when I would go to the beach and I would listen to the, the waves hit the shore, that always brought me into a better space. And I really miss that. And <clears throat> like now what I do is I, I'll go out to the foothills, the Sandia Mountains, and I will, you know, that will bring me into a better space. So those are things that you can do or like, <laughs> You know, like last night, I was out with my partner. We went to a, a pub, and they were playing this crazy music on over the, the the sound system. And one of the songs that came on was a song I haven't heard in years, but it reminded me of when I used to go dancing all the time, you know, when I was, like, in my teens. And just hearing that song just kind of, like, brought me back to, like, that happy place. So there's lots of things that can bring you better. And also, if you can get a diffuser and put essential oils in the diffuser, and if there's a certain oil that that you enjoy the smell of, that will help you, you know, bring yourself into a, a, a better vibrational space. So sound, scent, um, just a you know, feeling, anything that you, you can do to put yourself in that better space. You know, if you can go there for a few minutes and get yourself there, that's a good thing to do. Or there's another thing they talk about is grounding. And one of the best things you can do to ground yourself is to go outside barefoot. Like, so if you've got a lawn you can go outside, walk on the lawn barefoot. That's your foot connecting to the ground and you're grounding yourself. You're grounding yourself to the earth. You're feeling the earth vibration. And that's a good thing that you can do. So there are lots of things you can do to keep yourself or get yourself back to a, a good vibrational space. You just need to figure out what works for you and if there's something that you can have handy around, like a diffuser or a song on the radio that can, you know, put you there, or a video, like there's a channel, I can't remember the name of it, on uh, Facebook where they, they play um, just videos of the beach, of the waves crashing, and I like that, because that, I can't be there in person, I can watch it on the screen. And that helps me as well. So, like I said, there are a lot of things that you can do, but don't beat yourself up over it if you find yourself in a space where you just start accumulating, you know, you find yourself in a bad space and you realize that you're putting out bad vibes and then you start beating yourself up over putting out bad vibes and then you think, oh, you know, fuck it. There's no need to do that. You just need to say, okay. You know and just forgive yourself and find a way because there's a way you just have to forgive yourself and find a way and so 
this is my two cents, the Barb Nash two cents on the law of universal vibration. I hope that this helped you. If it did, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you can get um, more videos on other universal laws and you will get some of the tips on how to get yourself into a better vibrational space. I know I said a lot of them on this video, but I'll go into them deeper on future videos. And yeah, and you know, just let me know in the comments what you think and let me know what issues you come up against and we can have a discussion about it. And I will see you on the next video.